Hey guys, we got a new toy yesterday. Came in the mail, right out of the box. And that is a new baler. And we're really excited to use it. Hopefully the weather holds out so we can use it in the next couple days. But here it is, a brand new 560M baler. And I'm gonna be walking around the machine, telling a little bit about the features, why we got a new baler. These last two years, we've been making quite a few bales. We've had above average moisture, and so we've had a lot of hay. And our old baler, which was a John Deere 569 baler, was getting kind of close to 10,000 bales. And my dad kind of knows that once you get to 10,000 bales, your trade-in value decreases quite a bit. And so we like to trade a little bit before that. We went ahead, we started pricing some balers, and we went with the 560M. This is John Deere's new baler. There's also a 560R, and that has some pretty cool features that this one doesn't have. One thing is, with the monitor, I'm pretty sure you have to use a 2630 display. And so, we only have one 2630 display, and that's always in our 7215R. That's our planting tractor, and we like that display to be in there. And so, we didn't wanna have to take it out and put it in this tractor, and plus, to be able to use some of the other features, one feature that the 560R has is that it'll actually stop the tractor for you and then you dump the bale and then it takes off for you. But to use that feature, your tractor has to have an IVT transmission and we don't have any tractors that have the IVT. So we wouldn't even be able to use some of the features that come with the 560R. The biggest thing that helped us to decide between the M and the R was that the M cost $10,000 less. And so it was kind of a no-brainer for us since we couldn't use some of the functions we'd have to bring in a 2630 display and so We got the M. So now let's dive into this baler And so we'll start up front right here. We have the mega wide pickup Which that basically means that your pickup is wider than your actual bale chamber Especially like in this year you really need that when you have those big wind rows and so how it does that is on the corners you have these augers that pull it in and then that helps it feed into the middle so it can get up into the bale chamber. Nice thing is that we really don't have to worry about breakdowns as much. On our other one, we were having belt issues and last year we had more belt issues than this year, but now we have all new belts. None of them have those splices in them and so we don't have to worry about that. We got it hooked up yesterday. We got the PTO on. It's got two sets of hydraulics. One to lift the pickup, and the other to let the bale out of the chamber in the back. And then we have a cord that runs up into our monitor. And the, we'll look at the monitor in a minute. It's pretty much the same thing as the old monitor. So coming to the sides here, that's how you open these. It's a little bit different than the last one. So this is what the side looks like. It's really open, you can get at everything. Right here we have our grease bank. And it has four grease circs, and it runs lines to a couple different grease points and so right here on either side there's four but you still got to hit a couple yourself you know you got your seven in the PTO there's this one right here right here and then there's two back in here now another option that we always go with is we get the big uh, flotation tires and you can get smaller or you can get these bigger ones like this and there are some times where we're running through something that's a little wet going through a bottom my dad will pick up the pickup and that way we don't get that wet hay in, but it helps that you don't drop your baler down in the mud and get stuck. And so you might have noticed right here, usually you'd have your little shelves for the twine. And that was an option that we took off and it actually saved us a few thousand dollars. And so we got rid of the twine and so we can only do net wrap and there's a few pros and cons. The biggest pro obviously was the price. But the biggest con is say our net wrap quits working for us or we happen to run out. Then we have no other option. We can't switch the twine and finish up a field to say we're trying to finish something up. The chains on our old baler were getting kind of loose and they were rubbing on each other. And last time we were baling, I could notice that they were getting kind of hot. And so it's nice that we could trade balers and everything's new we don't have to worry about anything yesterday one of the first things we did was we put powder on this rubber roller it helps reduce some of that friction and it 
makes it so your net wrap doesn't grab onto that roller and start wrapping on it. And so we did that right away yesterday. The baler came with this small thing of net wrap and then we loaded in another one just so we're ready for next time we start baling. And you might have noticed that this is no longer that big green piece of metal. It's now this black plastic. And they switched to this plastic. I think it looks pretty sleek. It makes this definitely a lot lighter. And so that's one nice thing. But the biggest reason that they went to plastic was people were backing it into stuff. And you can see when I push, it kind of bows and goes back. And so the idea was basically if someone hits this on something, you won't dent in that old green metal panel. Now it'll just pop right back and you don't have to worry about switching it out or anything like that. So going over to the other side, it's kind of the same thing. This is where we get our, that big main chain and you can see it's, it's tight in here. When I push on it, it actually might be too tight but it's not war like our other one. I should have got some video of that. But yeah, we got another four in that grease bank. And so that just makes it a lot quicker. There's still a few more that we got to do ourselves. Like there's one down here. And then like I was saying on that other side, makes things a little bit quicker. That was a pretty inexpensive option. And it was nice that we could get rid of our shelving for our twine and put in the grease bank. And so, I noticed this yesterday, but it still has those little holds for the twine. But you can see there's no arms in it or anything like that. So now let's hop up in the cab and look at the monitor a little bit. So here's the monitor. It looks about exactly the same. It's still got all the same buttons. All the same words and then in the back it comes with your reference sheet and it gives you well here's your error code and it gives you a bunch of different settings and and suggestions for how you should do different things and so it's pretty similar it's basically exactly the same as our old monitor and then the cord runs out of it and the power comes from right here and then it connects to the baler, runs out the back window. So that's pretty simple. Basically the same as the old one. In the back, we got the same kicker that the other one had. And so that just helps throw the bale out so that way when we close the end gate, it doesn't come down on the bale and then we don't mess up the bale or bend the back end. So the five and the six basically just mean that it makes five by six bales. And our other baler, it also made five by six bales. So. We're going to be making the same bales. We're going to be using the same net wrap. To shut the door, you just pull that up, pull on it. Slaps right in there. Here's something else that's pretty interesting. If you have a baler, you probably have the same setup as this. But we have a short pin. That way it doesn't poke out much. It doesn't grab onto that windrow as it's coming in. And then we don't have a pin in the bottom because that hay will pull pins out. Plus it'll just make hay bunch up even more. So up top, you have this that just sets right on top of it. This little pin right here. And then it makes it so the pin can't come out. And so that's our biggest purchase we've made this summer. 560M baler. I know in the next month or so, I'll get a lot of video of this being run in the field because we have about I don't know, more than 150 acres of millet that we're gonna hay. So it was a quick video today. Thanks for joining me. See you later.